Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dharma Helper and this is Gage Reviews. This is my Season 1 Episode 6 review of Scorpion. If you missed any of my previous Scorpion reviews, there will be a link in the description down below as well as an annotation behind me on the screen. You can click either of those and that will take you right to the playlist that has all of my Scorpion videos in it. Uh, also earlier this week I put up my Gotham Season 1 Episode 6 review and my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 Episode 6 review. And there will be links for those uh, playlists in the description of the video as well for you to click and check those out if you're interested in my thoughts on those series. Uh, so Season 1 Episode 6 of Scorpion was called True Colors and it was the Halloween sort of episode where uh, the uh, the story of the episode was investigating the uh, the theft of a painting that was worth, I think, a hundred million dollars, and so the team is investigating this painting theft, and is a, and uh, there's a forgery involved, and all this different stuff. But what's interesting about this episode is that it follows that format of giving us the end result first, and then having the characters of the episode explain what happened and how they got to that point. So it starts off at the begin at the end of the uh, the mission, and it's all this chaos and cars are blown up and and an agent explains that they caused all this damage and they screwed up the mission and all this stuff, and the team is basically assigned to a psychologist to get evaluated, and so over the course of the episode, as they're explaining the mission to the psychologist we get flashbacks and, and we get an idea of how they got to that end point of all that chaos and burning built, burning uh, cars and stuff. And it was, it was, a, it worked well, I thought. That sort of uh, format worked well in explaining the episode and, and it was a really solid episode. So let's, let's start off, let's talk about the characters in this episode. And uh, as always, let's start with the, the team. And let's start with Walter. And in this episode, Walter uh, really evolves, almost would be a good word to use. His, his relationship with Paige takes that next uh, step where he's starting to develop real serious feelings for her. And uh, as I predicted, he is um, struggling with that, struggling how to uh, express that. And we see him in that scene where he gets a little bit jealous when Paige is dancing with uh, that one guy. And then he uh, compromises the mission by interrupting the download of that computer to continue dancing with Paige. And uh, just to see that human side of Walter start to come out of his shell a little bit, I thought that was pretty cool to watch. That was uh, compelling. And uh, I want to see more of that, more from Walter and more of him... Uh, experimenting I would be uh, an apt word to use. Uh, it's the word they use in the episode, sort of that experiment of a more human, uh, a more emotional Walter. And if that's uh, genuine or if that's uh, a fake, a facade? Is it facade or fake? Facade. Let's say facade. Um, if it's a facade that he puts up and a, an experiment that he puts up and his interpretation of emotions rather than his genuine emotions. If that's, uh, if it's him as an experiment or him actually developing emotions and he's wrong in that, because he, he keeps saying, uh, in this episode he says it, and a couple episodes ago he started, he said it, that he doesn't have emotions, that he doesn't process emotions. And whether he's wrong about that or whether he's right about that is going to be an interesting idea to explore over the rest of the season and if Paige can bring that out in him, is going to be interesting to explore uh, over the rest of the season. So that's pretty much what's going on with Walter in this episode, is he's uh, struggling to understand and to uh, convey these ideas and emotions that he's having. Uh, so let's talk about um, Sylvester, I guess, would be the next best thing to talk about in this episode. And I was actually really happy with the way that Sylvester was portrayed in this episode and his character in this episode. We got an idea of a more comical, relaxed side of Sylvester. He's not so much anxious, not so much OCD, uh, not so much uh, pent up and, and just he's he got to relax in this episode. You know, he had that whole thing with 
uh, super fun guy, the superhero, and he was uh, he, he had some really good lines in this episode in terms of the comedic relief, which is usually Toby's thing, uh, but Sylvester got to play around with that, and I thought that was really uh, kind of awesome to see uh, Sylvester unwind and relax a little bit, and that whole thing with the super fun guy and the t-shirt and you know, it was great, and, and his delivery of that, you know, the whole idea of uh, uh, maybe I should go in the warehouse with you, and then as soon as uh, something went wrong, he jumped on the opportunity to go after Cave and get in the warehouse and get that t-shirt. The whole That whole delivery and the way that was written and acted, that was really cool to watch, and that was uh, probably my favorite part of the episode. So more from uh, uh, Toby and um, Happy in this episode, speaking about Toby. Let's talk about Toby and Happy in this episode. They continue to work together and continue to develop that relationship, and that's not really surprising to me. But uh, you know, they had that whole thing where Toby was uh, in the wine cellar and he uh, screwed that up, and he was wrong about that. Uh, so to see again that these people, these geniuses, can be wrong sometimes, I think that's a huge uh, point to drive home in the series: is that just because these guys are smart doesn't mean they're right. And so to see that Toby sort of uh, continue to uh, cause road bumps for the team. In, a, in the Vegas episode, he caused that road bump when he uh, bet all that money and, and lost Walter's bail money. And then in this episode, he, uh, he had that idea about the wine cellar that didn't pan out. Uh, that was pretty cool. And um, Happy and Toby, like I said, Happy continues to... Uh, have that relationship and that back and forth with Toby and I'm interested to see at what point they're going to realize that it's a little bit more than a friendship and that they should start to uh, explore that and uh, speaking about happy just very briefly um, the most important the most interesting thing that I saw from happy in this episode was uh, when they were evaluating uh, when they're being evaluated by that psychiatrist and we get to see not only happy's reaction to it but everyone's reaction to uh being evaluated by somebody and Happy's was the most interesting in my mind because again she's got that anti-social behavior and uh, she uh, puts up these walls and to see her go toe-to-toe -to -toe kind of with uh, somebody whose job it is uh, to tear down those walls and to get inside people's heads uh, that was kind of uh, cool and interesting and sort of uh, compelling to watch that and that back and forth that they had. Um, talking about Paige very briefly. Paige in this episode, um, like I said, she has that whole thing with Walter. And then she, over uh, the episode, she's trying to get uh, the team to participate in Ralph's co a Halloween costume party. And again, continuing that idea of emotionally putting the team... Uh, in, into uh, situations where they can relax and sort of develop emotionally. And I thought that was nice. And, and again, I'm waiting for the moment where her and Ralph uh, uh, sort of team up and, and have their own sort of episode, uh, maybe where they have a mission or two where Ralph and Paige sort of take the lead. Uh, Ralph in this episode continues to sort of serve as a side character and, and as a, a sort of... Uh, a tool or a device for the, the story to develop with the page and Walter and the team taking care of Ralph. And I want to see maybe an episode where Ralph uh, takes care of the team or takes care of himself or an episode where we've seen the impact that not having Walter on the team takes on the team. So maybe an episode where uh, not having Ralph or not having Paige uh, impacts the team in some way. I think that would be uh, a nice avenue to explore for the episodes or for the series. So that kind of covers uh, characters for this episode. Um, we didn't see a lot of Cabe in this episode, but the little bit we did see of Cabe is just is kind of the same stuff of him sort of going to bat for the team, but saying, you know what, I'm going to bat for you, but this is kind of, maybe they're right, maybe you can't sort of function without supervision and stuff like that. And to see more from Cave, and again, more from his daughter and that whole storyline, maybe a flashback episode or something like that would be interesting and would be nice to have. Uh, 
one character that I did want to round out my character discussion with was um, uh, Hetty from NCIS Los Angeles. If you've ever watched NCIS Los Angeles, say that five times fast. Uh, she's the, I think, the director or the sort of Gibbs or, or Gibbs role for NCIS Los Angeles, which uh, I don't watch NCIS Los Angeles, but I might pick it up after seeing her in this episode and how awesome she was in this episode. She's a uh, very uh, to the point and very no nonsense and very sort of intelligent and compassionate and sort of uh, sassy almost. And I think it would be interesting to have her come back onto Scorpion because the way that she deals with these uh, geniuses is sort of unique in that she doesn't uh, ba she doesn't babysit them. She doesn't treat them like babies or any differently. She just kind of treats them like they should be doing the right thing. Like they, she treats them like any other person. She doesn't sort of uh, walk on eggshells around them. And that was the one thing that I thought that was really cool about that character was that she has these moments where and these lines where she's like uh, not really giving them any special treatment or uh, treating them with the respect that being a genius might entail or treating them as uh, entitled because Walter has that entitled air about him, but she doesn't uh, treat him like that. She sees right through that and she just kind of says, you know what, uh, you guys need to do this, you guys need to do that, uh, you guys are... A, a team of people, and I'm going to treat you like you are just anybody else. So to see that character, that was a cool character and a nice sort of cameo. And uh, whether or not we see more from her, uh, I would like to see more from her and maybe more cameos from the uh, CBS Universe, NCIS, uh, uh, Hawaii Five-0, uh, you know, characters from that sort of universe since that's all tied together it seems. Uh, it might be something interesting or... or uh, it, Honestly, it may turn into a gimmick, but I didn't see it as a gimmick so much as like a promotional thing or a gimmick. I saw it as sort of, you know, a nice nod to uh, Scorpion and sort of welcoming them to the CBS family. And uh, that was sort of uh, cool to watch. So to see more of that, I think, would be would not necessarily be a bad thing. So that covers my thoughts on characters. Uh, let's talk about the episode as a whole. And uh, as I said, it's sort of a, a forgery case where they have to figure out how they forged this painting and why they forged this painting and who forged it and all this stuff. And the one thing that bothered me about this episode, and it was a significant criticism that I feel like I have to bring up, is this is, I think, the third or fourth episode where the bad guy uh, was somebody on the inside. It was an inside job. If you go back and you look at the episode with the bombings of the buildings and that whole uh, taking out the internet thing, uh, that was an inside job with the FSG agent. If you go back to the Vegas episode, that was an inside job with the uh, daughter of the owner. If you go back and you look at maybe, maybe you can consider that episode with Mark an inside job in that he set it up and he convinced the team to come on to the job and then it turns out that he was actually behind it. Uh, maybe You can maybe count that, maybe not count that. Uh, but either, in either case, this is the third or fourth episode where it's an inside job because, you know, the uh, curator is actually revealed to be behind it and all this stuff. And so I wasn't necessarily uh, glad to see them sort of continue this pattern of inside job uh, uh, villains and uh, three out of uh, six or four out of six, either way you shake that, uh, whichever way you fall on the whole uh, Mark Collins thing, that's a worrying proportion of episodes so far that are inside jobs. And if they continue to just work on that, that's going to go, uh, if they continue to go down that path, that's going to go back to my criticism in the first review that I did of viewing the story like a formula. And if they continue to do that uh, and approach it in almost a Walter-like fashion, where it's a formula 
or an equation and you have to plug these in plug these that that plug these variables and values into the episode uh it's not going to it's not going to continue to work it's not going to click and it's going to be repetitive and that's not something that I want to see out of Scorpion as a show um one thing I did want to touch on again in terms of the story uh it's revealed over the course of the episode that the forger used a 3D uh painting a 3D printer to uh, paint the perfect sort of forgery and then um again in the beginning of the episode we see that the car is blown up and that apparently the the painting has been destroyed but the twist uh that they put on it was that Walter and the team uh swapped out the fake painting for the real painting and returned the real painting to its actual ancestral sort of owners and that goes back to what I said about Walter and the team sort of evolving emotionally and uh, understanding emotionally the best thing to do. Uh, Walter talks a lot about the uh, in this episode about efficiency and it would be more efficient I think to just complete the mission and to return the painting to the uh, museum. And you know Walter has this whole thing in the course of the series where he's talking about efficiency. He's talking about it for a few episodes and then uh, this whole elaborate sort of thing, it wasn't very efficient, but it was the right thing to do. So to see that evolution from these characters uh, was nice. And to see that they are not uh, above uh, tanking the mission to, to do the right thing, uh, that was cool to see. And I hope we get to see more of that where they're, they're starting to realize that uh, the most efficient way or the most uh, uh, prudent way to do things isn't the, necessarily the right way to do things. And we start to see that emotionality uh, uh, creep in and influence their behaviors and their decision making. Uh, so that'll cover it for my review of the episode. Uh, overall, probably my least favorite episode of the, of the season so far. Uh, but that's not necessarily saying that it's a bad episode. It was an okay episode. Again, my problem with it was that idea of another inside job uh, with the curator and, and that whole thing and approaching the story as, as a, a straight-up strict formula. Uh, it just didn't work. And uh, if this had been any earlier in the series, like if this had been episode two or three, uh, it, it would have been a good episode in my mind, but... Uh, again, it, it just goes back to that idea of this is uh, the third or fourth time that they've done that inside job sort of uh, stick, and it just doesn't work. And hopefully they, they get out of that bubble and uh, we can see some actual sort of villains or, or uh, outside people start to influence things in these cases. Overall, uh, my least favorite episode of the series... But that's not saying it's a bad episode. That's just saying that I enjoyed every other episode more than I enjoyed this one. And so if you like this review, leave a like so that I know I'm headed in the right direction. If you have anything you want to talk about in terms of what I said or didn't say, uh, if you want to agree or disagree with me in terms of uh, that whole idea of this being uh, a repetitive thing, or if you have anything to comment on, please comment in the comment section down below so that I know uh, that you guys are engaged and that I can continue to do these things and uh, so that I have uh, your support. Uh, speaking of support, share this video out there, get it on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, wherever you got to get this video out so I can grow the channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter at the DH Reviews so we can talk a little bit more about the episodes. Uh, if you're interested in more reviews, subscribe to the channel and you'll see my, rev my reviews as they come out. Again, I do Constantine reviews on Mondays, Gotham reviews on Tuesdays, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reviews on Wednesdays, and Scorpion reviews on Thursdays. It's starting to get a little bit busy here on the channel. The schedule is starting to take shape, and I'm actually interested, I'm actually um, excited to actually get to start uh, uh, really rolling here with these videos, and I hope you guys are uh, as excited as I am to get started. Uh, with that being said, this is the Halloween weekend, so... Comment down below what are you going for what are you going as for Halloween? 
Uh, do you have any favorite Halloween shows or Halloween movies? Uh, me personally, my favorite Halloween movie of all time would have to be uh, Halloween Town, which is like a series of movies. And, and if you've never seen it, check that out. Halloween Town. I think it's a Disney Channel movie. And uh, it's really one of my favorite of all time because it's one that I could just relax, you know, with my family, watch the movie, and just really have a good time. And so that's that's it for this video. Uh, happy Halloween. Have a good weekend. And I will see you guys next Monday with my Constantine uh, review.